Ladies and gentlemen, today I, I, I'm, I'm very bothered. I'm bothered because I am sick and tired of watching my community, whether it's here in America or even globally be used as a stepping stool to pick it back off of our hurt, pain, trauma, etc. for other people to use us to gain when they didn't have to suffer anything. And I know many of you are tired of this and many of you have called this out. So you want to go back to what we called out with Jim Crow Joe, when he was making negotiations with people that came across the border illegally broke the United States federal law and said that their children were separated at the border. When the game is that I have received directly from people who work on the border that I know personally, that they will come to the border and they will leave their children there for the children to cross and use those children later to get them across. That was the game that was being used. So it wasn't this mass separation like talking about Well, we heard about the number of $450,000 and a lot of us, you know, as a community were pissed because they wait a minute, $450,000. That's our reparations payments right there. $450,000 talking about giving, uh, up to two payments a family. That's our reparations. And we have learned from, uh, the virus payments that they can easily deposit money into our bank accounts with the quickness. So that's reparations right there. Now, after we had raised Holy Hill at the Democrats for that, Jim Crow Joe eventually, and them talking about he backed out of negotiations. And of course the ACLU is pissed off about that, but why did he back off? because we sounded alarm, We were not going to be quiet about that. And we should not. Now the latest disrespect that, you know, the Democrats and Jim Crow Joe's administration is doing with the assistance of, um, sister girl, Kamala Harris, is that recently they had a Freedman's bank forum. Okay. And the Freedman's bank forum with the U S treasury secretary, Janet Yellen, Oh, announced is significant new funding to boost lending to minority owned businesses and low income communities at a racial equity forum on December the 14th. Now you're talking about the Freedman's bank forum and you use the term minority and low income communities where low income communities could be a trailer park. Understand what I'm saying? So it sounds like you using black people once again to funnel money to everybody instead of black people. But let's, let's talk about the history of the Freedman's bank. It's not that hard to talk about that. And let's see who's the rightful people that that money really should be going to. So at the end of the American civil war, the poor conditions of our ancestors who was just released from being enslaved were aggravated by the economic devastation of the Southern States. Now the newly freed black people had few economic resources or capital, even less exposure to private enterprise because we was, you know, on the plantation, we didn't really know about the system and the way it worked. Now many soon returned to sharecropping and forced labor in the South. That's slavery. 2.0 and you can definitely do some research into that. And we can talk about it extensively here. If you would like a video on sharecropping and why is slavery 2.0 that went all the way up into the 1970s. So they say to help alleviate socioeconomic conditions, the Republican controlled U S Congress established a Freedmen's Bureau passing an act of incorporation and a charter for the Freedmen's Saving and Trust Company, which was signed into law by president Abraham Lincoln, March 3rd, 1865. Now they say the founder of the Freedman Savings Bank, John W. Albert, they say it was inspired by the success of existing military savings banks. They say these military banks were created during the Civil War to, to collect the wages of black soldiers. 
Now, General Rufus Saxton established the first one in Be uh, Beaufort, South Carolina, 1864. Other examples include a bank in Norfolk, Virginia, established by General Benjamin Butler in late 1864. And a bank in Louisiana created by General Nathan Banks. Now, they were saying many former slaves were liberated by the Union Army and were paid to join the Army. And said troops earned little cash from their enrollment and participation in Freedmen's became the first banking entity to include them. Many and in most of the accounts held between $5 and $50 uh, during that time period. Now, if we look at this and we adjust uh, for today's standards with inflation, so $5 in 1865 came out to today would be $85 and 26 cents. Now, $50 uh, from today's standards, uh, what they had back in 1865, would be $852.60. So continuing. So he said that from 1865 to 1868, the expansion of the Freedman Savings Bank was largely driven by the money collected from black soldiers. Okay. Now, so far you heard that it came from black soldiers. Did it come from people of color soldiers? Or did it come from black soldiers? Did it come from minority soldiers? Or did it come from black soldiers? Because last time I checked in the Civil War, we didn't have Asians fighting the Civil War. We didn't have Hispanic people fighting the Civil War, Arabs. We didn't have Native Americans. We didn't have none of those people fighting like we fought, right, in this country. We have fought in every war, every conflict, in this country, black Americans have been the most patriotic American that has graced this land. Black Americans started even the revolutionary war. A brother by the name of Christmas addicts jumped that off. These people didn't even jump off their own revolutionary war. It took a black man to jump that off. Okay. So when we talk about this Freedmen's bank forum, and you talking about minorities, that is the most disrespectful crap that these people just love disrespecting black people and using our history and what happened to us to benefit other people. Let other people benefit off of their own suffering and pain if they're going to do that. But let's continue talking about this Freeman's bank and why it's offensive to black Americans, what they're doing. So in the first year of the bank in 1865, two branches established were created through the transfer of existing local military savings institutions. Many of the branch locations were chosen specifically based on local black soldier participation. As a bank officials were made efforts uh, to build the bank legitimacy and deposits, raising part of the black soldiers wages. For example, many cashiers of branches also worked as military dispersing officers. Now they said from the Freedman Savings Bank creations, there were several issues in the governance and management that combined to its ultimate collapse. So since the inception, the bank trustees had little incentive to govern. All 50 original trustees were white, no black people. Okay. They said, and were not required to give any security of the faithful discharge of their trust. Many trustees had little to no involvement with the bank. It said with some even saying that they have never agreed to be a part of the board. In addition, the charter, that established the bank uh, continued no penal clauses to bind officials. As a result, trustees were not personally liable for the condition of the bank either. So nobody would be held responsible for anything that was going on. So that's problem. Definitely. Number one, I say the charter establishing the bank was ambiguous and of how deposits could be used with the exception of very clear rule prohibiting lending until the amendment of 1870. And I said, while two thirds of the bank's deposits were required to be invested in us government securities, and say the remaining available funds did not have specific restrictions. So they wrote that the fact that somewhat disquieting to those familiar with the history of the savings banks for the, they that knew the available funds frequently became unavailable. Say one instance of the bank explicitly going against his charter was the investment of funds in the bonds of United, I'm sorry, Union Pacific and Central Railroads in early 1869. So they took black people's money and they invested it into the railroads. They didn't ask these black people about that. They just did what they wanted to do. 
Now, in addition to these, there are historical evidence that the bank's management misled depositors about a supposed government guarantee. It's the interest payments and the use of the deposit funds. So during the initial years, the bank initiated a marketing campaign in order to promote the bank to attract deposits. This includes using churches and Freedmen's Bureau schools to distribute bank pamphlets and other marketing material, advertising through local newspapers and holding public meetings at churches, beneficial societies, and the bank's branches. So these marketing materials often depict the bank as having the financial support and guarantee of the federal government, even while the bank was a private corporation with no government guarantee. An example of this is an article in this semi-weekly Louisiana, which stated that there is no possibility of loss for the reason that the government of the United States is responsible for every dollar deposited. So basically they were saying they had a FDIC when it was not the FDIC. Cause now today you, all your money is insured up to $250,000, um, according with the government now. So in addition, it's an interest rate of 6% was proposed to depositors. However, in many instances of the bank's history, depositors received a lower rate of return on a deposits. Now, continuing, they say a series of increasingly speculative investments caused the bank to accumulate bad debt while decision to build a new building in Washington, D.C. added to its financial trouble. So they were just spending money and not taking the money in and investing black folks' money um, into the railroads, didn't talk to black people about any of that. And this is the history that we're going to continue talking about here. And you're going to, once again, you're going to say, well, how dare these people name this form Freedman's Bank? So they say the bank managed to obtain an authorization from Congress to make loans backed by real estate. However, only half of the deposit funds were used for loans, uh, real estate loans, and these loans had to be secured by mortgages that would double the value of the loan. Once again, black people wasn't getting these loans, remember? Now I say the bank investments often violated the bank's charter and its amendment. One example is loans to approximately $50,000 made to the Seneca Sandstone Company. It said the owner of the Seneca quarry is secured by the company's worthless bonds. It said the loan was approved by Henry D. Cook, the head of the bank finance committee, it said who sat on the board of the query company. Now, bank officials also approved personal loans to themselves. So now they finesse and getting money themselves, as well as associates of the bank. For instance, loans totaling $224,000 were made to Robert I. Fleming, who's a contractor of the bank's building in Washington, DC. Now, if you convert that to today's standards, that was loaning out $3.8 million of black people's money in that time period, right? It said, even as the failure of the bank was imminent and depositors were, were refused from being able to withdraw their deposits, a secret loan of $33,000, 366.66 were made to Juan Boyle, it say by the actuary, the George L. Stinney of on eight, June 30, 1874. Other instances include investments in the bonds of Union Pacific and Central Railroads as early as 1869. So that secret loan that we had just heard in today's standards uh, would be worth, we put this up on the screen, 500608 nine, five, seven, so $568,000. Okay. They, they are just loaning out all of black people's money. Okay. So we just want to give you these numbers. Now they said they had, uh, the bank's management closed linked, uh, to the bank's affairs to the investment bank, J cook and company who heavily invested in railroads said, as head of the finance committee of the bank. It said Henry cooks, J cook's brother. It said deposit a significant share of cash in Freeman's bank and the first national bank in Washington, DC as which J cooks had an office. Now the amount was highest on 500,000 on which the cook brothers paid five percent interest, even while the Freeman's bank was promising a 6% on its own deposits. Okay. So now this is what happened and the failure. So when they had a depression back in 1873 and all the railroad projects failed, it messed off uh, all of the money. So following the panic in the attempt to restore confidence in the bank among African American community, there was significant change in leadership. Now this, this, this is the finesse they about to pull, right? So John W. Alford, what he did in 1874, he said, look, man, this bank is failing. Hmm. What I got to do. And we got to get black people confidence in this bank back. So let me go get respected 
brother by the name of Frederick Douglass. Let, 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 let me, let me go ahead on and, and, and get him, let him be the president. Right. And so they put Frederick Douglass as the president. And I say of this change of leadership, they say Walter Fleming as they remarked, some looking for a scapegoat were anxious that colored officials be in charge when the bank failed as they would be sure and say others thought a, a Negro administration would restore the confidence of the depositors and able institutions survive until better times. So the, the, the goal was let's put Frederick Delix in. He going to get black people to have confidence in the bank. And then what's going to happen is black people gonna deposit a bunch of money and then they're going to save this bank, you know, cause we can't do it if we in charge. Right. But if it fails, it's Frederick Douglass fault. Like, you know, I have to watch that with them folks. They always try to put a scapegoat on black folks sometime when they, when they doing dirt. And then when it comes to the, uh, people roasting you or people, uh, coming at you, be careful with these folks, be careful. So the bank closed on July 2nd, 1874, despite the reform attempt, some scholars claim that the failure of the Freeman's bank and the loss of their savings would led to a distrust of banking institutions for several generations among the black community. So that's why a lot of black people say, get you a safe, you know, uh, hide it in your wall, bury it somewhere, uh, put it in your mattress. This is why a lot of black people for a long time, long, long, long time, never had a bank account because of what happened with the Freeman's bank. Now, when it came to their actual losses, say just after the collapse in 1874 in July, three commissioners were appointed to wind down the bank. They found the value of assets were lower than what would register in the bank books as of July, 1874. So basically the Mazungus was, was cooking the books. And so in addition, liquid assets, cash and government securities were total less than 2% uh, say what the bank held. And many depositors never received their deposits back. We're talking about black people. They never got their money back. It said to repay them, the commission decided to allow on personal passbooks only instead of the bank's books. So therefore depositors needed to mail their past books to Washington to submit their claim. Many depositors who had lost faith in the bank were reluctant to do so. Others faced legal challenges in proving their identities or the relationship to the depositors who had died. Some who received checks and I cashed them as they were unaware about what their checks were. They say repayments came late with adverse consequences for depositors facing severe personal cash shortfalls. Cause think about it. You had your money in this bank. Think about this. You go, you, you got your money in your bank, your paycheck, whatever your savings, you go to your bank and they're like, Oh, sorry, bank's closed. Like, okay, where my money at? Oh, uh, send me, send me your deposit slips and whatever you got in deposit slips, send it to me. And then that's going to prove that you had money here. And if I can identify you, you get the money back. If not, well, I don't know. Sorry. Sucks for you. I mean, could you imagine that? Could you really imagine that? And this was happened to our ancestors here in this country. You understand? So on top of that, the commissioners say, even in the face of many special requests made by depositors to obtain small amounts of cash, instruct the cashiers at the branches to not advance any money. Even in the case of extreme necessity as a matter of bank policy in response to this, some depositors who had lost faith in the bank and were in dire need uh, of funds sought to sell their claims against the Freeman's bank at a discount. Some were even selling past books of grocers and other store owners in order to receive groceries, other supplies. Think about it. You have no money for your kids. You have no money for your family. Like, man, look, I need some money right now, man. I just come on, man. It, it is what, you know what I'm saying? Think about the, the things they put our people in. Now, say on many occasions, the discount that depositors received for their claims was steep. Say, for example, an account holder at a New Orleans branch in 1881 surrendered his $352 deposit for just $28.16. So think about that. His $352 deposit. Now, that $352 deposit in today's standards, the brother had six thousand dollars in his account. And he set up there. And when he gave it to this person for what, 28, 16 is what we said. That's basically let giving it up and only getting $480 when you had $6,000 in your account. Isn't that sad? 
It said on the first dividend an announcement, only 49% eligible depositors received the payment and bank statistics showed that these were largely claims from wealthier depositors. So they had some white folks put money in there too. Account holders who had only small balances collected little to no funds. So the, the delayed payments as well as a limited share of depositors receiving that suggests that on average depositors received far less than 62% of their deposits. You understand? So, they said the bank records of 480,000 names estimated to be the largest single depository of lineage linked to African American records. So at least almost half a million black people lost money. Now let's get to this despicable, disrespectful Jim Crow Joe administration. After black people lost all their money, you want to put the name Freeman's Bank, which was a big finesse of black wealth put black people in dire straits and you want to come up here and have this thing called a Freeman's bank forum and talking about you want to boost lending to minority owned businesses and low income communities. And we know what that means now. This is why black folks are pissed off with this administration. It's the constant disrespect. They say here in this current article, we're talking today, then the Jim Crow Joy administration plans to announce major milestone attempts to create a more equitable economy for black, Latino, Asian, native, and other communities of color at the 2021 Freeman's bank forum. Now when y'all heard the history that did Latinos and Asians and native Americans and other communities of color, all that stuff you're talking about, did they lose their money? Were they up there selling $6,000 worth of deposits for $480 so they can feed their kids? Were they doing that? When they tried to get their money back, they couldn't because, hey, the bank, we're not going to accept the bank's records. You got to have your deposit slip. And if you don't have it, tough luck for you. You understand what I'm saying? All these other groups get to use the names of what my ancestors and your ancestors been through to get a bag. But they have not been through anything. Let me tell you something. If they had all their own version of a Freedman's Bank and they took their money, okay, hey, I got nothing to say. But they're talking about this. The funds are part of the $12 billion earmark for once again, minority lending as part of the 900 billion COVID-19 relief package passed by Congress in December, 2020 and led then by Senator Harris. Okay. Now this John Hope, Brian, the founder of operation hope, a nonprofit group that works to end poverty. Welcome the treasurer's efforts as a step in the right direction, but said far more work was needed to redress decades of inequality. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. If you want to, if you really want to help black people, you're talking about the Freedmen's Bank, this is what I would do. Let's say I was the president and I had all these funds. I would say, okay, treasury, one thing that harms black Americans and we've seen with the pandemic is two things, the lack of ownership when home ownership, cause they need the home ownership. The numbers of home ownership for black Americans has not changed seems since the 1960s, the black people have made more money since then and home ownership rates has not changed. We understand during the pandemic people that had mortgages, they got to extend their mortgages sometime up to 18 months without pay people. That's most, a lot of black people rent because they're not in a position to get a mortgage. So this is what we should do to, to fix some things, two things we should one give black Americans $15,000 down payment and closing cost assistance for homes, because we understand Homes can be, you know, you can flip a home, you can pass down a home. That's one way to build your wealth. That's how a lot of white folks got the middle class started is that when they start giving all these loans out to the white middle class, they got homes. Black people couldn't get homes. We got ghettos. Understand? The second thing that you can do with those funds is that you can make those funds available to uh, black small businesses not corporations. And you can't use the term minority because minority, you know, institutions, they say you want to give money to minority, uh, institutions. Um, well, let me tell you something. 
Bank of America can say, hey, you know, there is uh, minorities that have accounts here, so we should get some of that money. Remember, I told you what minority is. We talked about this before, right? Chase Bank can say, hey, you know, I mean, we got minorities that do accounts here. They got small business accounts here, so we should get that money too. Understand? Instead of saying, no, give the money to the SBA and then give the money to black small businesses. And that way, of course, you could track that. You know, you look at their, their tax returns and things like that, you know, or whatever they're they trying to do or whatever. They can do it that way. They don't have to give it directly to the bank because if you give it directly to the SBA, it's still through a federal fund. It's not through the banks. So you still li- allowing the banks to still make a decision about what they do with the money instead of saying, let it be directly through a federal agency, like the small business administration. You understand? They're not serious. In my opinion, they're not serious because if they were serious, they would say black because free the Freedman's bank and the people that lost their money with the Freedman's bank wasn't people of color, wasn't minorities. It was black people and put black people in dire straits. This is why this Freeman's bank forum is offensive. And I seen the same cast of characters, Al Sharpton and all the NAACP and, and all these characters that always show up and just trying to sit up there and thinking that's a good thing because they would have had me at that Freeman's bank forum. I would have had a problem. The moment they said minority, I would have represented us. Well, I wouldn't have said nothing, uh, uh, you know, uh, wrong. I'll just quote it history. I'll say, wait a minute. I need to understand how is this the Freeman's bank forum when the Freeman's bank was created for patriotic black soldiers and their families. And then you marketed this to the, the, the black community to put their money in, in this thing. They put their money in and, and they, they had millions of dollars in this, in this bank and you took all the money away. They could not even get their money back whatsoever. No other group in here has dealt with that. But black Americans, how come when it's something for black people, it got to be minority people of color and it, the low income? Because like I told you before, low income could be the trailer park, too. But when it comes to something for, let's say, the, the, the modern minority community, right, they get a whole hate crime bill. They didn't include us on it, which we should have been in on that. When they want to do something about immigration, that has nothing to do with us. Everybody, they, they can do something specifically for. But when it comes to us, we can't get the money that's deserved to black Americans. We can't get it. And this is why black Americans has to tell them, no, no. You said if you're going to call some Freeman's bank for them, it needs to go to black Americans. And two things that can help black Americans right now is down payment and closing cost assistance up to $15,000 and business loans and grants to small businesses in the black community done through the SBA. That's how you could help black Americans real quick. And that's something Jim Jim Crow Joe don't need Congress to do what I just said. He don't need Congress to do any of that. He, He can do that tomorrow. Don't let, don't, don't y'all think that Jim Crow Joe can't do nothing for the black community. If he don't want to, he's in control of the whole government. He don't have to get a bill across to tell the SBA to give black people a certain amount of money. He, he don't, he can come, he can tell them, Hey, um, with, uh, the FHA, I, I am allocating X amount of dollars where black people can get $15,000 in down payment assistance and closing costs. It's the stuff that he can do right now. Y'all got to understand that the president has a lot of a stroke too. Yeah, always talking about Joe Manchin this and Joe Manchin that. Everything not on Joe Manchin now. Jim Crow Joe can do it if he wants to. He just don't want to. When they had the the forum at the UN talking about reparations, he made sure not to even attend that. He like, nah, that's not important about reparations. That's not important. Um, I, I need to go talk about the virus, with which you're you're losing at miserably. You're miserably losing at the virus. You you're losing miserably. What I'm saying is always push back, always, always push back on these people sitting up here using our history to push this minority and people of color crap, always push back. That's why I say, let me take my time and talk about the history of the Freedman's bank and why it's offensive 
to be doing this to our community. You should be upset for our ancestors, my ancestors. You should be upset about that. And you should tell Jim Crow Joe, you could tell your sister girl, Kamala, you need to go tell them, stop disrespecting my ancestors to give a bag to these other people. Listen, that's the finesse, y'all. Every time you catch them doing that, oh, black people go through this. Hey, LGBT getting some money. Oh, black people doing that. Hey, the model minority gonna get some money. Oh, black people. Oh, that's so bad about black people. Hey, here's money to the Arabs. Oh, black people. Oh, they do. They deal with so much racism. We need to give some money to the Afghans. You see, you see what they do? They always start on us and pivot to other people because they know nobody else can talk like that way in this country but us. Nobody can. These other groups come back. Well, you're not guys not the only one suffering. Most of you came over here by choice. That's number one. Two, you want to compare? Fine. I put up all the pictures up of, of my ancestors swinging from trees and slavery and and all and, and civil rights movement. Shoot, this year, last year, George Floyd, brothers and sisters being hung in recent time. I can compare all those pictures, and you, you I want you to bring your pictures. Then bring your pictures. Bring them. I want to see the mass incarceration rates in your community. I want to see the exoneration rates in your community. How, how you, cause you're not leading in that. You're not leading in, in anything to warrant you to be getting a thing. Matter of fact, your reparation and your benefit is, is them allowing you into this country that was already built and already maintained. You should be happy that you're here. Just work hard and make some of yourself. Instead of you being happy that you're here, you want to come in here and, and, and put your feet in, 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 in the benefits that black people fought for and act like you got right to it. If you suffer, what we suffer. You got every, you got every right to it. I wouldn't dare go to nobody else's country and demand that I get something that they people suffer for. I don't care if it even is the African country. I wouldn't do it. It'd be like me going to South Africa right now. And they about to give a, a reparations payment to people that suffered apartheid. And I get up there like, shoot, well, I need some of that too. I need that. And none, and none of my ancestors went through apartheid. We went through slavery and Jim Crow. What I look like going over there doing that. I wouldn't do that in a European country. I wouldn't do that in Latin America. What I look like doing that. I'm just happy to be there and I'm going to make my life good. And, 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 and I support the people getting it. Say, Hey man, I support y'all get y'all bag, man. If y'all get y'all bag, come on and shop and spend money with me. Shoot. I'm, I'm right here with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm supporting y'all. Y'all getting y'all bag. I, you know, that's how I respond. But see, you know, I respond with dignity. I respond with common sense. These others respond with, I don't have to respect black people. So I want to get their bag too. And these, you know, uh, white liberals, you know, teach everybody not to respect black people. You can use them to get a bag and we're going to push back on that every single time. It's your first time coming here to listen to our podcast. I know it's a long one today, but we had to go into the history of the Freedmen's Bank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us here on the podcast. And if you enjoy our podcast, make sure, make sure if you can, leave a love offering on cash app. And the reason why we push in cash app more than, than maybe the uh, super chats and things on YouTube, because YouTube takes 30%. So if someone gave $10, YouTube would take three of that. Yes. That's a lot of money that YouTube takes. And I know you, when you donate, you don't donate to give to them. You donate to give to whatever content creator, um, that you are giving to. Now you want to do a super chat. We still take it. Thank you. Thank you for it. Um, but like I said, cash app would be the best. And I want to continue to promote cash app or maybe PayPal or something like that over uh super chat. Not to say we wouldn't take a super chat, but remember it's always 30% what they take away uh, from your fellow content creator. You could be listening to. So we, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we, we thank you for taking the time for to listen to this podcast, especially with some of our history and why we are upset with the situation and definitely, definitely see you next time.